Uh, thank you guys for staying here all day long. Uh, I may be a little biased, but I think we've saved the best for last. Um, I'm actually, I'm going to start the guerrilla marketing right now. So you guys uh, have, have maybe heard about responsive design. Uh, I want to talk about it a little bit in case you, you aren't completely familiar. Uh, you've probably seen this chart often. Uh, maybe as you were convincing a client you need to do a mobile site or, um, you know, looking at, at uh, maybe even responsive. Uh, but often when this, when this graph is looked at, uh, you're looking at the two individual lines. You're seeing the overtake of mobile uh, over desktop uh, over the next couple of years. But what you're missing is what those two lines add up to be. There's a tremendous amount of content coming out uh, that is going to be seen on all different kinds of screens. Desktop screens, mobile screens, tablet screens, and creating some cohesion between all of that content on those devices is extremely important. And that's where this guy came in, uh, Ethan Marcotte. If you are not familiar with him, I would say he coined the, the phrase responsive design. Uh, I've had the pleasure to work with Ethan a little bit, and by all means, the nicest guy in software I've ever met. When he was working on the redesign for uh, the Boston Globe, he wrote this article back in May of 2010. Uh, it was outlining the philosophy that they used in creating that site. Uh, he got an unbelievable amount of traction from this article. I, I believe it was posted on a list apart. Um, it's a great, great outlet for information if you guys don't often check out that site. But so he took all of this information and he wrapped it up into a book called Responsive Design. Uh, it's like 75 pages. Uh, if you are at all interested in responsive design, that should be the place you start. So with all of these screens, all of this content, you know, responsive design started to become that, that magic bullet of, of getting your content across every screen. You know, and naturally, anytime you, you get uh, a solution like this, people start to poke at it. So I, I want to really build on top of responsive design and think about it a, a bit more tactically. So his philosophy says responsive design begins with a fluid or flexible grid, flexible images or video, and then you use media queries inside of the browser. But I want to build on this towards responsible design. So responsible design to me is taking every person in, in the process of creating your, your final development, your design, your content. It's going to require a writer, a designer, and your developer. <laughs> I saw that guy in the audience earlier today. But all of these different people need to think about the entire process. The writer, the content creator, needs to think about the implementation inside of, of, uh, of the website. The designer needs to understand CSS, needs to understand the capabilities of the web. And the developer needs to know what's coming to him, what image formats are, how does he deal with, with text. Because we're ultimately going to the web. This is a different medium. If you were a designer five years ago, maybe even two years ago, you were thinking a lot about print. You were thinking a lot about publications. You were thinking about posters, uh, flyers. But now, with getting information out onto the web, it has its own new set of rules. We've created applications to help you solve all of those problems. These are the industry best applications to creating print, phot photography, and screen design. But we wanted to start over and think about how can we create a design application to let you create for the web. And we went straight to HTML5 and CSS3. And that got us Reflow. So a few of the major tenants that we have behind Reflow are an HTML-based design surface, a flexible grid system baked directly into the design surface, intelligent web layout, to allow you to work with your content and know how it's going to react when it's inside of a browser, but then a, a real focus on creating designs and using web topography. 
and there's reflow. So let's take a look. We've created this one-to-one -one design surface. Anything you draw inside of reflow is made to render inside of a browser. We've created this flexible grid system. We allow you to customize the columns, your gutter width, whether you'd like to have your gutters inset or not, but then even let, the, let you get the grid out of your way, control the opacity of your grid. So let's see it in action. So we see reflow here, and we have our, our grid options. I can very easily control my slider and get any number of columns I want. Oh, ah, see, that's the right click. Nobody likes that. Open. There we go. But then you see up at the top of the screen all of these pretty colors. These are visual media query breakpoints. Each one of those represents a media query inside of your CSS. So I can go to any of these breakpoints and start to customize the way my grid looks. So it's six, uh, 840, I may only want 10 columns. 640, I may only want five columns and increase my gutter width. So now at each of these perspectives, I can change the way I'm actually designing and know how it's going to react. So we've created an intelligent layout system. Let's load up a new file here. There we go. Cool. So what we're seeing here is essentially a bunch of divs. But all of these divs, we control. Hello. Here we go. We control using margin and padding. Uh, we, we don't have things like an absolute size, an absolute width. Uh, by default, boxes are, are percent based. You know, if we look at our, our box here, you can see he's defined as 87% of the width of the container. As I click through, everything just scales. What's also unique about this is that I can freely resize. And where you may define individual breakpoints, uh, during the design process, you, you discover a lot of things actually happen in between your breakpoints. You may need to adjust your breakpoints. You can grab any of these and resize them to anywhere you want. Uh, or easily add a new one. We, we've built this on top of floats and clears. Uh, this really helps all of your elements reflow uh, as, as your content changes. So for example, I, I've put a box here, and it's below this. Well, let's see. Let's add one more. So you can see it actually interacts with all of the elements. I drop a box here, it usually applies a clear. But you can resize and continue to work with all of your elements on, on the stage. Um, let's see, what do we have next? Awesome. Designing with CSS. CSS is evolving at such a rapid rate. I mean, you saw Vincent's presentation this morning with what's coming very, very soon. And you can imagine the power of all of those customizations inside of Reflow because I certainly can. So let's pick a box and check out our style panel. We wanted to create a UI that, that you're used to. I mean, this is an Adobe product. We've made design tools before, but it's been an awesome opportunity to just re-examine how design tools can be made, especially around a CSS spec. So I have control over my backgrounds. I can choose a background color. We have a very nice color picker. Let's, uh, let's find ourselves a nice blue. Cool. So you can also paste in colors or convert between hex, HS, LA, and RGBA. But now that I have a base color, let's add a gradient. Maybe take this guy and drop out his opacity, just give a bit of a highlight. Might as well turn off some of these edges here, too. So now I can work a little bit more directly on my element. 
Uh, this border here is actually a, a padding uh, visualization. So as you work with the elements inside, you can see they're being measured off that padding. So let's select our box and let's add a border. Uh, give it a bit of a radius. I have the option to control all of my borders individually or I can control them separately. So I suppose I should be advancing some slides here. Let's pick a border. A little bit thicker. Cool. Oop, one too many. We have web bumps coming next. <laughs> uh, but let's give it a quick drop shadow. Control how you like things. We actually store all the recent colors that you've used inside your application uh, for quick reuse. You can also add a background image. So we'll pull up the browser here. Let's check out some of the style assets. Ooh, and it's empty. Never mind, we won't add an image, but you can. But even if I add another gradient, I'll be able to prove my point. Okay. So inside of these, uh, visually, you'll want to see how your, your design reacts the best. So we can simply grab these elements and start to reorder them and have that immediate feedback. So let's add one more drop shadow as well. Since you can have multiple drop shadows, we'll make this guy inset. White, go up a little bit, let's drop him down, cool. So you can start to see how it's really easy to create very complex designs using just CSS. Now no design is complete without typography. So Jeff talked about this this morning, uh, edge web fonts. This is the free and open source font collection we're now offering, and we've baked it directly inside of Reflow. So if I grab a piece of text, we'll add it to this box. We have our font styling panel. You know, here you see basic browser fonts, but we also have the entire Edge web font collection. Scroll down and choose just about any font I want. Let's grab a headline font. The source sans is pretty cool. So it adds it to my project. Here it is. And it updates. By default, we size all of our text by M's. Uh, so let's maybe make this guy two M's. Change the text a little bit. There we go. We can style it. We can center it. We can underline it. We can make it italic. Uh, font weights are actually pretty interesting. So we can read the metadata from your font and provide a nice little slider so you can see exactly the weight that you want to design with. A little text shadow never hurts. There we go. Cool, so you can start to do a lot of design with web fonts. So now what? I've created this design. I, I've made this design adapt across my different breakpoints. Uh, you know, if I come down, let's see, let's make this box a little bigger. So we can make our font a little bigger. Because like as I get down to my mobile, I'm going to want to update my font size. And you can see that all of the changes that you make in each of these states are stateful. We have this nice little button down here that starts to expose the code. So now it's, it's not only showing me my default CSS styles, but it's also showing all of the, font, or all of the properties that are overridden at each breakpoint. 
I could choose this guy. He has several changes going across the breakpoint, the size, the padding, and the styles applied to it. So while this looks awesome, we have a long way to go. Uh, we've been working around the clock for, for several months to get us to this point, uh, but there's several things that need to come in before we, we're actually able to release. Uh, most notably, undo, redo, little things like copy and paste. Um, but then we want to start to get into some more advanced topics like creating visual style guides, element libraries, managing styles for reuse across your project or across multiple pages, uh, possibly even multiple projects. And then we want to start to engage with you guys. Now that we're public, we can actually talk about all this. Like, do you want markup? Do you just want CSS? How do you really want this tool to work? Uh, this is an entirely new philosophy that I can't wait to get into. So before I wrap this up, uh, I actually want you to help me out. Uh, we have the Reflow team here today. Um, I really want to thank these guys because they have done an amazing job building this application. So if you could help me give them a hand. Cool. So if you want to know a little bit more, uh, we're up on html.adobe.com. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Reflow. And we will be talking to you guys a lot Thanks.